You're watching the Daily Decrypt, where we are all currency competition all of the time. I am your host, Amanda B. Johnson, and today's episode is brought to you by Bank to the Future. Most of us spend some or a lot of time online, whether it's for shopping, researching, entertainment, you name it, watching the Daily Decrypt, naturally. And so the question then becomes, what happens to the economics between us if and when our online experiences become so immersive that we begin to sense them as an entirely different reality? Maciek Olpinski is a technology blogger who got his start at Google and who has recently begun exploring the potential relationship between cryptocurrency and virtual reality. Tell us how you... How did you become interested in cryptocurrency in the first place? Then we'll move on to these other things. Yeah, so, you know, it all started with, uh, like my, basically my background is in media platforms. I worked for Google for many years, uh, working with Google's display network, the banner ads you're seeing everywhere on the web, uh, and then YouTube. And, uh, you know, I was always interested in these emerging technologies, and that was back in 2012. Uh, I've learned about Bitcoin. Uh, and, you know, as many of us, you know, I kind of thought about it initially as a cryptocurrency uh, and then discovered the entire uh, protocol aspect uh, that this thing could be much bigger. And then really I got into it way more. Uh, and uh, most of the topics of, uh, on my blog, the topics I cover are at the intersection of uh, media and cryptocurrencies because you know online media economics of online platforms this is something you know i've been working with for many years so naturally um, these intersections are really interesting to me and yeah virtual virtual reality is uh, is of course it's, it's an emerging technology super interesting uh, i'm more of an enthusiast than somebody who's acti actively pursuing projects in that space as of now, uh, but the implications of uh, virtual reality and blockchains are like, you know, hardcore sci-fi stuff that's actually coming. So <laughs> that, I'm, that I think hardcore is the perfect word to use in that sense, because so before cryptocurrency created actual like scarcity uh, mm -hmm. that could be translated into money, Games, like m multiplayer games, they had in-game tokens. Like people were buying and selling things with each other in games before cryptocurrency was even invented. Now, those tokens within those games perhaps didn't have real-world monetary value because they weren't, I guess, especially scarce or just weren't easy to use. But as you pointed out in your piece, okay, so this is like, Cryptocurrency is like digital currency that could not only be used in games as payments from player to player, but oh, once you take the headset off, this money can actually like buy me things in the real world too. Yeah, like uh, what the future that we're heading towards is the future where the digital and the non-digital and the analog are converging. So there's really like with Bitcoin already, there's no difference uh, between, the, you know, you can buy stuff in the real world for Bitcoin. Uh, I would even say that the, the implications of the blockchain for VR uh, go one step further uh, because um, uh, with a blockchain, essentially we can come to a consensus as to what happened, with, what transactions uh, took place and in what order. So basically the way like the time stamping and the blocks, it allows us to come to a, to a consensus um, in terms of this particular version of truth and reality. So the blockchain is the history uh, of what happened <laughs> and we all agree uh, to that. Uh, if you take this, if, if, you, if you forget, uh, a payment is like, you know, using in-game payments in VR, that's just one thing. It's very interesting and, you know, it's going to happen for sure. Uh, but essentially, uh, if we assume that VR is going to take off, and I'm assuming it will, uh, the question is, you know, how this virtual world, is, there, there's this concept of the metaverse. Metaverse is basically like the 3D VR web. Like you have, you know, we have a 2D web, we have websites, and it's all connected uh, via the HTTP protocol. Um, so the question is like how the VR worlds will be connected. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so the blockchain can be the foundation um, and basically provide a foundation for the history of the particular 
uh, VR world, like what happened, who bought a particular piece of land, who owns what. Uh, because right now, uh, if you have a virtual uh, reality experience, you're basically downloading an application from the server. And it's controlled by Oculus or by Google uh, or by Steam. And they basically serve you a particular version of the world. But mm -hmm. uh, once you turn it off, it disappears. There is no continuity uh, in that world. Or if there is, it's controlled by the third party, like World of Warcraft, for instance. With a blockchain, you can imagine that uh, we can come to, instead of coming to a consensus uh, in terms of the transactions, like we do with Bitcoin, so we have a consensus of what happened with transactions took place and what's the balance of uh, each particular user. We can have a consensus as to the state of the virtual reality world. So you can have parallel versions of like virtual history and you can join the reality that you prefer, for instance. And you can create these virtual worlds and agree. Uh, you can agree in a decentralized manner as to the rules uh, in the particular virtual world as to the economy and so on and so forth. I told you, it's very sci-fi. It's very, it's very yeah. sci-fi, but like, it's... Well, yeah, this statement you made, yeah, yeah, this statement you made of being able to, I think the way you phrased it was join any reality that you like. Like, that, I mean, that is, that is what it caused me to want to talk to you about this, because that is like, Wow, that that is a, a huge implication. And let's just talk for a moment for anyone who has not experienced virtual reality. Do you have your goggles there? Yeah, like I have the Gear VR goggles here. That's the, yeah. the, this is the mobile VR headset that's, that's would, manufactured by Samsung. Would you mind? I know they look silly. Uh, would you mind just putting them on for a moment, just for and perhaps? Gonna, without it, because you know you slid the phone here. Without <laughs> without the phone, it'll make you look googly eyed, maybe. Like this? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yes. So it, okay. it looks really goofy, uh, but uh, it's, it's the internal experience. You just you just have to try it yourself. So I've done it myself. Hmm? And yes, I just I want to describe for our viewers, anyone who has never used uh, virtual reality. Um, so with the headset that Machik just put on, uh, he would slip his phone into the end if his phone were running a virtual reality app. And I don't know how it's able to do this, but basically with the combination of the headset and the phone, um, like the, all other visuals are cut out. And so you can be standing in your living room but you have no visual awareness of anything except what is being shown to you on your phone. And as you look left, the, the phone's program shows you what is left in that software picture. You could look up, down, right, you can look all around, you can turn around. And uh, I, like I said, I've only tried virtual reality once, but um, in, the, in the program that I tried, I think, so someone made it like a little horror show or like a haunted house that I was w walking through. But anyway, so I don't know. I think the default was that if I stood still and just looked straight forward, I would slowly move forward in like a hallway. And I was looking around in the hallway and there were blood spatters on the floor. And I was probably like I was looking at these papers and I was probably only in there for like a minute. And I'm telling you, like when I took the things off, it was like, like coming, I was like, oh, there's a couch here. Oh, like I'm in a living room. Oh, there's Pete. Like it was so immersive that just when I took them off, I felt like I had been transported through like the pipeline of time travel into another place. Yeah, that's pretty much the experience and <laughs> this is how you feel. If you're watching this uh, and if you feel like you don't know what we're talking about, you need to find someone who has the Oculus Rift or HTC Vive or any of these headsets. There's many of them coming up. Even no. Google Cardboard. Isn't Google Cardboard like $15 or something? Like yeah, you can get I, this I, stuff I, cheap. I have Google Cardboard here. It's an old one, uh, but uh, you basically put your phone in there and it works. It uh, shows you the idea. Uh, the actual experience is like, it's actually amazing what you can get from the piece of cardboard. Uh, but uh, in terms of the actual experience, there are with 
Oculus or with HTC Vive or even with, with Gear VR, uh, the quality is way better. So I advise you to try the, the, the best headset possible and and then you will understand. Like if you're watching this, just try it and then you will understand. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's really impossible. It's talking about, it's like describing someone the taste of food and trying to use all these object, adjectives and yeah, it sounds cool, but you know, once you try it, then you know it. So this is this type of technology you have to try yourself. Now is, okay, so that, that company Voxelis, I thought I remember hearing that they were starting a cryptocurrency called Voxels. And now in terms of how virtual reality games could be hosted, you were saying before that right now virtual reality is hosted on like Google's server or Oculus's server or whatever. So are you suggesting that you, you think that the games themselves could be hosted in a, in a blockchain like manner? Like, like, is that what Voxelis? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure what exactly is the voxels model I heard about them but uh, yeah. basically uh, you know because VR it's not only about games there are projects and there's a um, project run by Mozilla the creator of Firefox uh, browser uh, so they're focusing on what's called web VR um, so it's basically the 3d web um, a way of describing 3d worlds uh, using HTML so you can go to a website and in VR and you can have the 3D experience of the website. Uh, so, oh. you know, yeah, so that's, uh, you know, it's still very niche. Um, it's, you know, the prototype stage, I would say, uh, but it's gonna take off uh, some of this. Pro so, and it's, you know, it's open, it's open like the web, it's not closed. Uh, it's not the closed ecosystem like, the, you know, Oculus ecosystem or, you know, the Unity and Unreal, all these, uh, 3D engines that were used primarily for games. Um, so, you know, we are at the stage right now where everything is closed because all, all these companies have to, you know, get the return on their investments into the technology. Uh, but it's going to open up. Uh, and in one way or another, uh, we'll be able to uh, create these virtual worlds, which are basically hosted, maybe not hosted on the blockchain, but where the consensus at the, um, as to you know what happened in the virtual world, or who owns what, or who owns a particular piece of virtual real estate, uh, it will be hosted on the blockchain. There's one of the projects uh, called uh, I don't know if I'm if I remember it right, but in, uh, built on Ethereum. It's called Etheria. So that's a proof of concept of a virtual world hosted on a, on an Ethereum blockchain. Uh, so. You know, we are at the very early stage, uh, but, you know, theoretically and conceptually, uh, these problems are really interesting, you know, it's, it's like a sci-fi stuff coming, you know, materializing itself. So do you think, okay, so if one can choose their own reality, at least for a time, at least for uh, the period of the day that you don't need to be like actually eating or actually producing something in the meat space world. Do you, so do you think that people will choose to spend perhaps more time in virtual reality than reality? reality? And if so, it seems like you're predicting that people will start to provide not goods perhaps, but I mean, so let's say you and I were interacting in virtual reality mm -hmm. and you know how to tap dance. And I'm like, hey, Machik, I mm -hmm. will send you $2 worth of cryptocurrency if you do a tap dance for me, like right here and right now, like <laughs> you know, wearing a pink bunny costume. Maybe I'm into that. <laughs> and you do that and I send you the $2 worth of cryptocurrency. So it's like, we've just had like a real economic transaction of value in virtual reality is that kind of what you see happening yeah i'd say it's already happening like people are spending hours and hours in games like world of warcraft and uh, you know they're getting paid for that uh, so these online economies are already there and the only reason that the currencies they use are not ex like directly exchangeable on on like you know global currency markets is because of the legal obstacles uh you know you cannot put uh, you know shares of uh, you know some virtual game i mean with shares but the you know, currency of a virtual game on forex for instance you cannot trade it against the dollar because of the rules regulations you know cryptocurrencies change that you know so now you have 
platforms like Ethereum, for instance, where you can everybody can create their own currency with a few lines of code. Uh, and you know what virtual reality is doing is just adding this extra third dimension to the entire game. So instead of playing and transacting in a game, but on your screen, uh, you feel like you're there, and suddenly, you know, everything how much, becomes. How sorry? much time do you spend in virtual reality? No, I'm just like, <laughs> you know. I'm a more of an enthusiast, and I'm seeing this uh, as a next step in the evolution of media. So the internet, like the way internet was evolving, has been evolving, was like, you know, we evolved from text, and then we had images, uh, and now is the time where video, online video went mainstream, like we're having this conversation on video using Google Hangout. Five years ago, it, was, it would be impossible. Like This wasn't something people were recording on a daily basis. And now, like video podcasts are, something very common and you know and uh, you know in five years time you know we'll have this conversation in virtual reality and you know we'll be sharing the space and uh, so yeah and these social vr applications are already there you can get your samsung phone download a social vr app and you can watch movies with people from all over the world like you know you see their avatars uh, so you know it's happening but it's very niche uh, but it's going to evolve. It's going to evolve fast. Um, and yeah, people will be working and maybe partially living in these worlds. Whether that's good or bad, I'm not the one to judge. But, uh, you know, it's, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. You know, I've already begun to feel a little bit behind the YouTube curve in mm -hmm. that um, there are already virtual reality videos like on YouTube. And so if you, even if you don't have a headset, these YouTube videos have a little clicker up in the corner of the video screen and you can click where you want to look. And as long as they were using like a 360 degree camera <laughs> to make their video, even without goggles, I can look all 360 degrees all the way around where that youtuber was filming and so i mean like i'm that makes the daily the daily decrypt like even a little bit old school that you can't like look all around like our hideous studio without me like actually showing you yeah 360 is like a it's like a first uh, step towards virtual reality for a lot of people uh, because you can watch these 360 videos on your phone and you can tilt your phone um, and you know you can you can you can have a full 360 view uh it's not the full it's not the full vr uh when it's the, not the, yeah it's not but you know it's a glimpse it's a first step for for many people uh yeah so uh, so it's gonna happen it's gonna happen but the question is uh like to me, because you know, I'm interested in how media works in terms of you know its economics, how these platforms make money. Uh, I worked for a platform who makes a lot of money <laughs> by facilitating these exchanges. Uh, I mean, Google, like you know, they're the backbone of the internet in many ways. So the question is, like you know, how we are going to like if you're going to have a popular virtual world. Like you have a popular website, you can make money off this website because you can display ads or you can sell products. Um, in virtual world, like you know, maybe that's too, you know, maybe for sure we will have ads. Uh, the advertising will be there, but the question is like you know how how it's going to be monetized. Like you don't have like uh, the two D web, two uh, D interfaces, the screens and you know, touch screens and desktop screens. Uh, are all based on the concept of clicks and everything runs on clicks. So you, people are clicking and click is the uh, is the primary currency of the attention on the web. Like how many clicks you got and everything revolves around clicks. In VR, you don't have clicks. <laughs> you, you, have you have an experience. Uh, of course, you can imagine you have a in, in VR and you can have page views and clicks in there, but in general, you are in a space. Uh, so, so what's going to be the, the currency? Like how are we going to, what's, what's going to be the attention currency of VR? This is something that I'm really interested uh, in and I'm thinking about a lot uh, because that's going to come sooner or later. Uh, but uh, I have some ideas, but no definite answers yet.
care to share the ideas? That could be a good closer uh, yeah, question. Right. If, uh, yeah, it's generally, uh, the, if we think about the blockchains, like, you know, VR is just one aspect of it, but generally uh, the concept of click uh, has evolved from the client server model of the web. Like we have servers and we have our clients and, you know, if you want to see, see a website, if you go to the website, what's happening behind the scenes is that uh, your computer sends a request to the server and it loads, uh, you know, requests the website. And the server is basically counting these requests, the requests you have. We're assuming that more people have seen the website. So <laughs> because, of the, uh, because of the client server model, uh, we got the concept of impressions and the clicks and the... Uh, Click click through rates because you know the number of impre- the amount of times the number of times uh, the page was displayed and the number of times somebody clicked. So here we have the click through rates and everything. The whole like, uh, online economy uh, is built on top of that. But with the blockchains, uh, you cannot come to a cons- there, there are no clicks in the blockchain world, like <laughs> because there are no clients and servers. Everything is based on blocks, on state changes from one block to another. That we have one state, and then the next block comes, and we the state of the blockchain has changed. Certain transactions were included into the block. Um, uh, so in the blockchain world, we operate uh, on the concept of time. Uh, so my mm, insight, uh, my observation, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so I'm just basically thinking out, out, out loud right now, is that the, the future economy, like the future uh, media, uh, if we have like the centralized Facebooks on the blockchain or YouTube or Reddit, like the equivalents, of course, because they will look totally different, uh, or have like some kind of a decentralized virtual world on the blockchains. So the economy, uh, we will come back to the concept of time. Uh, like in the age of TV, uh, you had uh, airtime. You were selling airtime. You were selling specific. Uh, your content was occupying time. <laughs> um, when we so you you could buy as a, as an advertiser, you could buy um, thirty seconds or one minute of airtime. <laughs> and if you bought this, nobody else could buy it because, like you know, it goes and it's over. Like the the time flies, <laughs> you cannot go back. So there was a scarcity of time, not scarcity of clicks. Uh, and I think that with the blockchains, um, if we will um, build the next Facebook or Google or Reddit or the virtual world on the blockchain, the, because we have the concept, like the, the time is represented by blocks, uh, everyone will be able to sell basically um, time in their feed. Like, you know, if I own um, my feed in the decentralized Facebook, uh, I will accept money for selling time in this feed because I cannot sell clicks. Like, you know, Facebook is selling clicks, but the Facebook is the middleman who's counting the clicks on the blockchain. We cannot count them. Uh, I don't know if it makes sense, but uh, because it's like, you know, I'm very deep into that. So some things are obvious and um, you have to understand like how the like if you're not in online advertising so some people don't recognize that clicks are actually valuable and you know everybody wants to get clicks and people make money on these clicks and if you record this on youtube uh you make money or on impressions like that not impressions views like you know if somebody mm-hmm. wants to view like watch your podcast uh they generate a view on the youtube side and youtube can serve uh, an advertising before your show so it's all about, but it's again, it's the ad request uh, that's happening. Uh, so it's all based on the client server model. So in the blockchain, I think we'll, we'll, we'll come back to the concept. The time will be again, the, uh, the currency of attention. Does it make any sense? Like, you know, uh, is it, does it click or? or? Does it click? <laughs> <laughs> does it click? Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, that's already how the Daily Decrypt is monetized. We sell sponsorship slots on our show because that those 15 seconds on every show are scarce. Um, yeah. Yeah, but yes, exactly. I mean, we don't have we don't have the confidence of our content living in a peer to peer network 
we, our content currently yeah. only exists uh, by the good graces of Google, and they are definitely a single point of failure for us. So yeah, I can definitely see um, the the transition from what it is that I already do to me being incentivized to having to, for to paying to have my content hosted um, in a peer to peer way. Yeah, so that's exactly it. You're selling you're selling fifty second slots uh, on your show, but this fifty second slots uh, are not objective in a way that you know there's no consensus as to these fifteen seconds. Like when uh, did it really happen? With a um, with a blockchain, we have the we have the objective time. We come to a consensus when something happened, and this consensus is based on the block numbers. So like we we all see that oh this block happens now <laughs> and the entire world can agree to that uh, so imagine that uh, you have a feed that's time stamped on the blockchain and it's tied to your decentralized identity uh, and the daily decrypt could, could then occupy <laughs> a certain moment in time which is objective which is on the blockchain and you could see that you know you have this you can use the metaphor of a tv channel <laughs> that only goes forward <laughs> and uh, and you can sell like and you could buy uh, advertising for daily decrypt on somebody else's channel because if there, there are a lot of people watching a particular channel you will get discovered uh, because they will discover you but just exactly like the TV uh, TV worked in the past however with TV uh, there was huge barriers to entry like only you know you had to have the broadcasting equipment, licensing, you know, millions of dollars. Uh, right now, uh, I think with the blockchain, everybody will have to, you know, will be able to own uh, their channel, uh, and it will be it will be based on the objective time, um, based on and based on the blockchain time. Uh, uh, but you know, it's very early. Uh, but uh, this these issues are super interesting to me. You know, how this future economy is going to work and and clicks will be gone because clicks are clicks belong to the client and server um, model uh, the internet as we know it now well i hope you keep blogging about it at machikopinski.com if anybody <laughs> wants to know what that looks like um that'll definitely be in the show notes as it always is the show links are always in the description section and uh, yeah, other than that, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Today's episode is brought to you by banktothefuture.com, the online investment platform that invests in the future of finance. One of their investments was in payments company Uphold. And below you can find the video link that explains the impact they've had by taking the volatility out of Bitcoin. More information is available at banktothefuture.com. Thanks for watching The Daily Decrypt today. I hope you come back tomorrow. See you then. What market share is there to be had by catering a crypto network to a specific demographic of people, like gamers? Jeremiah Nickel is the marketing manager for a cryptocurrency called Hyper. The other thing that's kind of neat is not just tied to the, the Hyper crypto servers, but there's actually a Hyper tip bot that's mm -hmm. available for Twitch streamers. You would invite the hyper bot to be in your chat so then people can donate hyper to your twitch stream or they can they can bet and like micro betting which i think is going to be a really neat thing for us